computer, I have a better chance of finding it. There we go. All right. So here we go. We're here to talk about and practice some principles of myofascial movement and a different way to experience yoga. Um, and so one of the first things that I like to do is I studied with Christine Wischke, by the way, who's in Canada, and um, she's a Ho Hokomi practitioner and oh. um, really teaches from a place of uh, love and safety. And so one of the first things we do is just a grounding exercise where we're getting in a comfortable position, whether it's sitting on the mat, sitting up on blocks. I always find it helpful for my pelvis and my spine if I'm sitting in easy pose just to be up on a block. So find your way to kneeling or sitting, whatever's going to be comfortable for you. Or maybe um, you're not able to get down onto the floor. So you're sitting on an ottoman or some kind of a stable surface. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you're having spine issues, you may need to support your back with something up against a wall huh. because the idea is to be able to be comfortable and safe in your body. So if the entire time we're doing a breathing or focusing exercise and all you're doing is going, oh, my lower back is killing me right now. It hurts. And um, that's not conducive to what we're doing. And then at the end of our practice, we're just going to explore some proprioception, interoception, pandiculation, which we can learn from our pets, and um, maybe one or two poses where we'll explore a different way to honor them in, uh, in our bodies. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I have this grand schedule, by the way, of all these things okay, I like go to with do. It. But I'd go also with it. like to my... be... I'm sorry? Do you need my sound on? Can I, should I just turn no, this you off? Can, can I listen? No, you can... You can go ahead and listen, yeah. And then at the end, we'll check in. Perfect. So um, one of the other things that I'd like to do is have you just experience hands-on somewhere on your body, uh, myofascial release, kind of the way I experience it as a practitioner, but we're going to do it and we're going to sink in and we're just going to connect with and feel into our own fascial system at some point. And then um, really just to be able to do a supported Shavasana, which again, if you have pillows, rolled up blankets, rolled up yoga mats, even if my yoga mats get all frayed or I'll, I'll cut off the other parts and make smaller ones that I can roll up. You take that with a little duct tape and you've got a really nice cushion for yourself. So anything that you have, a blanket, if the temperature a lot of times when we settle into our body, we'll get cold. So it's nice to have a blanket. If you choose, I have one of these yummy eye pillows that just is such a good weight and smells of lavender and buckwheat. So um, just the kind of things to have water nearby. And this is never um, going to be the kind of yoga class where we start out with a, uh, we do a flow and we're following our breath completely and everybody is on the same page doing exactly the same thing. This is more of a really learning at the beginning, especially to honor our bodies and to see what's going on. And one of the cool things about doing this self-care practice is you're um, treating yourself, but then you're also feeling into the spots that when you go to an MFR practitioner, you can say, you know, now I'm aware that I have this tightness that runs all the way down my arm or from here, twisting across my back to here because I felt it in my body while I was doing these things. And then the MFR practitioner can help you better because you know what's going on in your body. So first, um, again, just to be able to be in whatever position, a seated position uh, where you're comfortable, and maybe it's not even seated, maybe you need to be lying down to be comfortable and that's okay too. Um, 
And the other thing is if we're doing things on the mat or on the floor and you don't have the capacity at this time to get on the floor, one, book a mini intensive, <laughs> two, uh, get treated, get treated, get treated so that you will be able to get on the floor because that's not an unreasonable or unattainable goal for anybody to be able to get themselves on and off the floor. And as we get older, it becomes even more important and we'll be doing some balancing things at some point as well. So you can get a foldable portable massage table and do the work on that. Or uh, some people I know have the Pilates tables, something that's elevated that you can get on and do things now. The only thing about a bed is generally it's just too soft. We make, they're made for comfort, not really that stability that you need. Uh, but if you've got no other place to start, then start there. So what we're going to be doing is really just recognizing our surroundings. And this is again, an exercise to just create some safety. So just be aware of your surroundings, the room that you're in, or if you're outside the space that you're in, uh, in the nature, whatever's going around on around you. Uh, maybe there's noises, birds, animals, um, traffic in the background, just noticing your surroundings and where you are, where you're seated as you settle into the body. And then looking around, because I'd like you to find a place, a color, an object, something that just feels safe, a point, a focal point that you can return to at some point in your practice, maybe if you were doing a balancing pose or something, just, just a point that, and maybe it's a color in the room or a fabric or a texture or a plant or a picture, something that just brings a sense of calm and peace and safety. And then as we become aware of where we are in space and we can begin feeling into our body, then we want to move from that proprioceptive, that, that sense we're always seeking safety. And so the ability to be able to find it, even if it's in a color or a picture or a rock or a crystal or a plant, and then taking that feeling and then beginning to settle into our body. And at this point, you may want to begin to just allow your vision to soften. You can choose to close your eyes at this point if you'd like, or at any point. And as you do that, when you notice that you have that visual sense taken away, it becomes even easier to focus on the interoception and what's going on inside the body. And one of the easiest ways to connect with this is through your breath. Just noticing the air as you breathe in through your nose and how it fills your lungs and where you breathe into. And this is just a noticing, it's not a requirement to change the way you're breathing. Just noticing the breath, the flow of it. Do you tend to have more or longer of an inhale or an exhale? Or maybe it's just more balanced. And then noticing even the temperature of the air from the room on your skin. And then beginning to feel your body. And maybe you're noticing that there are little tweaks you can make, little movements you can make. That's okay in order to make yourself even more comfortable.
Now imagining in your body, your sits bones, if you're sitting, your sacrum, the base of your spine. And if you're lying wherever your body is touching the mat or the surface you're lying on. And now just imagining that from the sacrum, from the base energy center of your body, that there's a brilliant light, red liquid lava light going all the way down into the earth. And as you imagine it, just sinking down into the earth, all the way to the earth's core. Red molten lava core of the earth. And drawing back up this brilliant energy, the heartbeat of the earth, all the way up. through your sacrum, through your root chakra. Creating more safety and security. As we tune in to the heartbeat of Mother Earth and this liquid red lava goes through our bones, through our circulatory system, through our entire body, connecting us with that groundedness and safety. And bringing our awareness back to our breath, and this time with a little bit more intention, just allowing ourselves to breathe in on the next inhale, fully all the way into the abdomen. You may want to place your hands on your belly and just feel it expanding with every inhale. And then fully releasing on each exhale. All the way from the bottom of the stomach up through the lungs and out through the nose or through the mouth. And now as you're attuned to your breath, really allowing your diaphragm to expand as fully as it can and release fully. You can bring your awareness to your shoulders and draw them backward and down away from your ears. And just allowing your neck to expand like a giraffe reaching for a leaf. As your head moves toward the ceiling and your shoulders move down and back. You can choose to take either hand, your left or your right, and place it at the base of your neck, cradling your neck. You can take both hands and interlace your fingers if you'd like, and a su support as your thumbs come down by the sides of your neck, and your fingers are interlaced behind your head. As you're again, expanding your pectoral muscles backwards as you draw your shoulders back together and down, creating a circuit, a connection in your body, bio tensegrity and action, as you just firmly but gently place your hand or hands wherever they're touching your head, 
cradling them. As you draw upward toward the ceiling slightly. You can choose to keep your eyes closed or open them at any time. But we're just gonna breathe here for a little while. Noticing if you need to make any adjustments, maybe your head needs to move to one side or the other or twist from left to right. Just finding what feels good. Much like when we get out of bed, and we just have a good yawn. So if you imagine yourself yawning as you're pulling your head up and your arms back and feeling your chest open, as you're breathing, expanding your lungs, imagining your spine filled with white light, any areas where there's kinks and curves that just don't belong. Just allowing them to lengthen and straighten naturally and gently. And what do your hands, what does it feel like underneath your hands? Can you feel a gentle pulse? The warmth of your neck the back of your head, your skin, where are your thumbs touching? And maybe as you turn a little and apply just a little bit of pressure anywhere you need, you can experience just a gentle compression of myofascial release. And then my favorite, one of my favorite yoga teachers, Yoga with Adrian. Find what feels good. That's a beautiful sentiment. And you may begin to just explore pendiculation even more by allowing yourself to come into a yawn-like stretch. And just allowing your body to move naturally. in ways that make your spine feel good, more fluid, your lungs expanded. Just exploring natural movement. And in the myofascial release world, this is called unwinding. Just allowing your body to move into positions and space that feel good for you. And you're never going to force or even really go all the way to end range, just allow yourself to have some supported movement. And in the animal kingdom, the animals do this naturally, cats, dogs, and, uh, and people forget how to just feel into their body. So my foot was falling asleep, so I moved it out from underneath me. So that those were little exercises in interoception, proprioception, our surroundings, feeling into our body, creating an element of safety. So finding a space or a spot, um, a focal point is also helpful if we're doing a pose, uh, like a balance pose or something, just to really hone in and get our focus. So, um, and it's also our ability to create safety for ourselves and things in our environment that are already here. So um, another thing that I would like to explore um, because I was noticing uh, so many people, this region is where we all hold our tension. And I was thinking of downward facing dog, which is one of the most common postures. I know when I do my little yoga things in the morning, um, I'm often in downward facing dog and I'm always saying it's a flow. And I'm like, even the slower flows 
oh, if only I could really sink into this for three minutes, for five minutes, how much deeper I could go. And not being in hyperextension for three minutes or five minutes, but to go into a pose, even explore a little movement and, um, and just settle into it and see what happens because oftentimes we'll get some amazing releases. And if we didn't hold that pose for the past the three minute mark, we would have never experienced it. It's the same thing when we're working on tissue in the body. Uh, I'm pr putting slow, steady, sustained compression, pressure, traction. And if I stop at the two minute mark or sometimes even the three or four minute mark, I'm missing the actual release of the tissue that's going to happen underneath that. Um, you could geek out on that for hours, but what I'd like to do is explore um, a variation on puppy pose or downward facing dog that's going to allow for the shoulders to come together and the head to drop down. And so you know that dowager hump the that people get in the forward leaning society. So this is to counteract that. And so um, I'm going to show you a few different ways because you can go into downward facing dog and do it and I will do that. But if you're not able to do that, then you can do this on, I did it standing on my dog's gate the other day and it felt amazing. So <laughs> I'm just gonna show you this. But while I'm in downward facing dog, I'll be exploring some movement with that as well. So you want a steady, stable surface that's not going to move anywhere. So again, my dog's gait, if I have a nice high back chair, if I'm standing, you don't have to be kneeling. If you're kneeling and, you, and your knees uh, need some support, this is one of my favorite tools are these sandbags, which I buy empty and fill them, but you can also buy them filled. Uh, because it, it has a little bit of give to it and it just makes my knees feel really supported or you can use anything that's softer as well. And you want to come down and put your hands out ahead of you. And what you're going to do is you're going to press your, almost like a child's pose where you're pressing your butt back towards the wall behind you and you're slowly sinking down so that your head is going to drop between your arms. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what we're going to do here is then, as our head sinks down, just, I always like to use imagery with this as well. If we're drawing our shoulder blades closer in together and we're just allowing, you should be able to feel it. You may feel it even more so in your pectoral region. Um, and there are other stretches and ball work that you can do for that. So notice where you have pockets of tension. And again, you can focus back onto your breath and you can notice, you can go back as far as is comfortable for you as your stomach and your heart move toward the mat, your stomach moves toward your thighs. And just allowing that stretch in your lower back, never if never in a position that's going to be any kind of pain, stabbing, searing pain, you don't want that. Only a good stretch and it doesn't have to be the end range to be effective. As a matter of fact, it can be even more effective when you just ease off a little bit because you can maintain it and hold it longer and just allow the tissue to soften naturally as opposed to forcing the entire time. So it's a very gentle approach and a supported approach because if you're not comfortable, you're not going to be able to maintain a position for the amount of time that it takes to really make a difference. And you can decide that you want to place your elbows uh, on the surface or on the mat. And then as soon as I did that and I went like a dolphin, I placed my hands in prayer position and put them behind my neck. Now my thumbs, I can actually press them into the base of my neck. 
and just have a wonderful, again, my hands are together. It's that notion of bio tensegrity in the body. It makes the entire pose easier because I'm using my own body pressing against itself to maintain the pose. Just focusing on the breath and allowing yourself to feel the stretch. And sometimes when we hold a position for a long time, it may begin to ache. Once again, you might want to incorporate a little bit of movement. Whether you're placing, moving your hands back and forth out of that position. And they're supporting you in a sphinx-like position. And just exploring, allowing your heart to move closer to the mat. And if you're on the mat, you can choose to support your head with any of the tools we mentioned earlier, a block, your hands, a rolled up blanket, a yoga mat. And if you do decide to place your head to one side or the other, it's always nice to give them equal time. Really just enjoying the stretch and connecting with your breath. And if you're knowing of any spots in your body that really need some extra love and light, just really envisioning that happening. Connecting with your breath. Feeling the goodness of the stretch. And you can choose to hold this pose even longer if you'd like. Or you can begin to slowly come out of it. And how you do that is more like pendiculation. Feel it feels good to your body. Maybe you want to do some rolls, some hip circles. If you are on your knees. Okay, if you do some on one side, then you want to balance it out on the other side. We'll press all the way backwards into a child's pose. You can do a child's pose on an elevated surface just like that. And if you're on your hands and knees, you can come to tabletop. And again, there is no right or wrong. This is your practice, and you customize it to however feels good to you and honoring any restrictions or anything going on in your body. If you are able to do a traditional downward facing dog, we're going to do that next. But first, just a little cat cow while we're here. Just to really, again, get that good stretch. And unlike the natural flow of inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, I'd like you to explore, again, each of the poses, each of the positions for a few breaths. So you can really feel into your knees pressing into the mat, the tops of your feet, your hands like starfish pressing down equally. And if you have issues with your wrists, you can always make a fist and just go like that instead. Have a straight wrist. 
and then imagining as you open your elbows toward the front of the room, opening up that chest region, all while you're breathing and feeling your lower abdominal region that goes all the way from your pelvic floor all the way up and feel it, the entire stretch all the way up to the tip of the chin and beyond. And then exploring, pressing your knees into the mat, pressing the floor away from you as you round your back. Again, pulling your shoulders away from your ears. And just allowing your neck to hang. And feel the difference of the inhale and the exhale in this position. And then you can explore the pendiculation and movement. Just invite your body to do what feels good. Maybe it's lifting up on one side. On the other side, your arm, hands up to the ceiling. Getting a stretch again in the pectoral region, which is always good. Just exploring some gentle movement. Back and forth, side to side. And whenever you're ready, press your toes into the mat. And down into down the palm. I'm going to invite you to not let your heels touch, but to just allow your feet to come even closer to your hands and you can pedal them out. Being aware of your breath, pressing in whenever you're ready as you and the your heels don't have to touch the ground, but as you press your heels toward the ground together, feeling the stretch all the way up your ankles, your calves, the back of your knee, your thighs, your buttocks, as you're lifting your pelvic bone toward the ceiling and just allowing like that beautiful stretch that our cats and dogs do, Allowing your back, your whole spine to naturally curve down as your heart faces toward the mat. Breathing. Feeling the stretch. And moving when you need to move, whether it's pedaling your feet out. Pressing your head down toward the mat more. And you may want to come down into puppy, come down onto your forearms. You can place your knees on the mat if you choose and come all the way back into child's pose if you like, or stay in downward dog for some more breaths. My favorite child's pose is to have my knees wide and even exploring some gentle pendiculation with that child pose. Natural movement. And through that, we're getting in positions where our fascial system is communicating and it doesn't necessarily flow in straight lines, it doesn't flow in straight lines at all. But this spiraling web, and as we feel into different movements, our bodies know what positions we need to get in, in order to heal. So allowing the practice of yoga and mindful movement 
and just bringing that element of play into your practice. And whenever you're ready, you can slowly bring your body in whatever way that feels good to you back up on the mat as we're going to explore a supported Shavasana. And so there is no right or wrong way to do this. You may want to put a little bolster under your knees. Um, you may want to have something under your neck whether that is a pool noodle, varying degrees. Um, I like sandbags under my neck as well. But again, there's something very grounding about them. You can use any kind of bolster. You can just take a regular pillow and just give it a little tuck like that so your neck is supported. And if you want to explore ball placement, if you have a... Uh, you can go ahead and get yourself set up as I'm doing this if you know what you want because it's an experimental thing where you're just going to place things. Um, they have air-filled balls as well. You can use those. I like to go to the Dollar Tree or the kids department of any store and get these foam-filled balls because they're a wonderful support as well. And you can get um, three inch or four inch, five inch. And so you can experiment with those. One of the things that I like to do is to take a pool noodle and put it this way and go up and down my spine. And so if you don't have balls now, that's okay. You just wanna use whatever you have to make this Shavasana the most supportive Shavasana ever. And as we're doing it, um, we're going to place our hands somewhere on our body so we can, again, experience the hands-on myofascial release um, to see if we can feel into our bodies. So I'm just going to invite you to take your props and find your way down to the mat in a way that is most supportive for you. And if you have a blanket to put over you, that's nice as well. Sometimes our bodies tend to get cold in Shavasana. Um, I'm going to be using a cocoon that will straight down my spine. And whatever it is that you're supporting yourself with, whether it's yoga blocks. I have some yoga blocks over there that I've cut on the diagonal, and you can use them as wedges to support yourself. But you want to have something that you can feel your body sinking into. And even though I'm going face up, I'd like you to explore the possibility of doing Shavasana face down. And because self-care on myofascial release, if you want to release your psoas, if you want to, as John Barnes says, this is the back of the front, that's the front of the back, they're connected. So you can take balls and you can place them on either side of your belly button and lay face down and compress on them, just like you can place them any areas you're experiencing tension and press into them that way. The whole idea is it's incredibly passive. So the more comfortable you are, the better. Uh, doesn't mean that you're not avoiding pain at all costs because you can sink into some painful spots and, um, what will happen is as you compress on them, they will begin, the pain will begin to dissipate and that's a good thing, that's what we want. So I'm just gonna invite you to compress down and I definitely need, because I'm up on the bolt on the um, bull noodle, I need a bolster behind my head. So um, the idea is that your body is supported on the same plane and even better if you have, um, balance. So I have, just have to move it down a little bit, but I have support under my knees this way. I have support under my spine up and down. And because I have that little elevation from the pool noodle or bolster or cushion, whatever you can use a rolled up yoga mat, again, straight up and down your spine, 
then what happens is when I open up my chest and I can put my arms out to the side or above my head, or I can put them behind my head like we were doing that supportive head cradling in earlier in the practice. And there is no right or wrong. It's how I'm sinking into comfort. comfort. And so through experimenting, the first five minutes of the Shavasana is really finding a supportive place for your body where you can sink in. And then I've found that now as I've kind of moved around a little on my, whatever I'm compressing on, uh, my yoga mat and my whole boodle. And my whole body is supported right now. I can move a little, I can sink in. I can feel between my shoulder blades, if I squeeze them together, it's almost like a little massage for um, my thoracic spine area. It feels amazing. And all I'm doing is contracting muscles and pressing them into this surface that feels so supportive. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a drifting off. It can be, even though it's passive, there can be active components to this. Awesome. I'm just going to invite you here to allow yourself to go inward. Feeling your body supported. Again, making adjustments as you need to. That might shift and change. And I'd like you to place your hands, either one or both hands, somewhere on your body, on your skin. So maybe it's at your navel or just below your navel. Maybe it's in the area, wherever you feel your body needs a little love and healing. Maybe it's right over the womb, over the ovaries, whether they're there physically or not, that area of your body, the pelvic bowl, the pelvic floor, wherever your body needs some extra love. Just allow your hands to touch your skin. It can be right above the pubic symphysis, or it can be right on either side of your iliac crest, so where your hip bones protrude on either side, and you can press your hands right into there. You can go farther up, and you can press um, your hand right on your rib cage, on your sternum. And again, best to do this on the skin, direct contact. Or you can go slightly above the sternum and place one hand or one hand on top of the other hand, just for that little extra compression. Just right at the top of the rib cage, under the clavicle. You could place it on an injury that you had, it, whether it's on your thigh, your arm, wherever you're drawn, your body is telling you to place your hand, so long as you have contact on your skin. And just allow your hand or hands to just sink in, no pressure, just rest in there, just rest on the skin, on the surface. Always coming back to your breath. You may just begin to feel a little more sensation of heat in that area where your skin is touching. It's really now Allowing your hand to move down toward the earth, toward the floor, toward the mat. 
Until it reaches the depth of the barrier, but just notice that your skin, your body, wherever you're touching, has softened slightly. And you're noticing the surface of your fingers and the palm of your hand as it's sinking into your flesh, into your skin, and into that fascial system, that liquid, crystalline, fiber optic network of connective tissue that runs through your entire body, wraps around your organs. It's everywhere, interstitial fluid, all the way down to the cellular level, this massive communication system in your body. And you can access it simply by sinking your hands into your skin. as you reach the depth barrier, you might decide to either press down towards your feet, just a gentle pull, no forcing, just a gentle pull. Or maybe it feels better to go to the left or to the right or anywhere around the clock in either direction. Just choose one. Sink in until you hit that gentle barrier And just focus on your breath and maintain that steady contact. Now attune to the energy of your heart, the energy we tapped into Mother Earth at the beginning of this practice. The energy from all the constellations in the universe the energy of love. And sending that energy straight to your hands and to the fascia below your hands and through your entire body from this point of contact. Sending so much love to all the spaces that need healing. May they be open and receptive to this work. You might even notice that the barrier that you were so gently buffering up against has now moved slightly You've gone deeper or farther in either direction. Sometimes we experience a therapeutic pulse beneath our hands that always precedes a release of the tissue. Turn into your breath and choose to stay here as long as you'd like. And whenever you're ready, you can begin to release the tension, the pressure, the gentle ease on your hands. And allow your body to do a final pendiculation. As you safely roll off whatever supports you had, find your way back to a seated position. I think I covered it all. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm going to um, stop recording.